All right, so when you think about ancient engineering, what's the first thing that pops into your head? For most of us, it's the Great Pyramids of Giza, right? And for good reason. They're absolutely massive, incredibly precise, and let's be honest, they still make us scratch our heads wondering exactly how they were built. We've all seen the documentaries, read the theories, maybe even dreamed of visiting them. They truly are a monument to what ancient civilizations could achieve. But here's the thing. What if I told you the pyramids, as mind-blowing as they are, are just the tip of the iceberg? What if they're just the most famous entry in a much, much larger catalog of ancient wonders? A catalog filled with structures and inventions so incredibly advanced, so seemingly impossible, that they make the pyramids look, well, almost conventional by comparison. For centuries, the true genius of ancient engineers has been buried beneath the sands of time, overshadowed by the obvious. We've been so focused on these colossal, iconic structures that we've often overlooked the even deeper mysteries the more audacious feats of engineering and the truly groundbreaking innovations from civilizations that, frankly, we often underestimate. We think we've got it all figured out when it comes to ancient technology, but I promise you, you're about to have your perception completely shattered. Forget everything you thought you knew about ancient technology. We're about to unveil engineering feats from forgotten civilizations that will make you question everything. These aren't just impressive ruins. They're proof of an ingenuity so profound. It will make you wonder if we've actually regressed in some ways. We're going to explore structures so mind-boggling, they defy our modern understanding of how they were even built. Prepare to have your perception of ancient capabilities completely shattered as we uncover marvels that prove our ancestors were far more advanced than we ever imagined. All right. With our minds primed to look beyond the obvious, let's dive into our first category of true ancient marvels, the impossible infrastructures. These aren't flashy monuments built for a king, but the very lifeblood of ancient empires designed to solve massive civilization-level problems. Our first stop is ancient Rome. When we think of the Romans, we often picture magnificent colosseums or powerful legions, but their true genius was in something far more fundamental water. The Roman Empire was a hydro powerhouse. They understood that to build a city, you needed a constant, reliable source of fresh water, and they were willing to go to unbelievable lengths to get it. They didn't just dig wells, they engineered entire rivers to flow right into their urban centers. The most iconic example is the Roman aqueduct system. Take the Pont du Gard in modern-day France, for instance. It's a three-tiered structure of monumental stone arches towering almost 160 feet high. But the real miracle isn't its height, it's its purpose. The Pont du Gard was part of a much larger aqueduct, a 31-mile-long conduit designed to bring water from a spring near Uze to the city of Nîmes. And here's the detail that will truly blow your mind. This entire 31-mile channel was built with a gradient of just 12.6 meters, or about 41 feet over its entire length. That translates to an astonishingly gentle slope of just one in 3,000. Think about that. Without lasers, without satellite imagery, without any of our modern survey tools, Roman engineers were able to maintain a nearly flat, perfect downhill slope across dozens of miles of varied, rugged terrain. They had to navigate hills, fill valleys, and tunnel through mountains, all while keeping that flawless gradient so that gravity could do its work, pushing millions of gallons of water per day into the city's fountains, public baths, and homes. This wasn't just a building. It was a feat of geometric precision and unwavering logistical mastery. It's an achievement that still makes modern engineers shake their heads in disbelief. Now, let's shift our focus from water to defense, and from Europe to Asia to one of the most famous structures on Earth, the Great Wall of China. Most of us know it's long, really long, but what we often see in pictures are the restored, beautifully preserved sections. The true engineering marvel, however, lies in the forgotten parts of the wall, the parts that were never meant to be pretty, only impossible. Imagine building a 5,500-mile-long 5, wall, not just on flat land, but across the most treacherous, unforgiving landscapes imaginable. 
Sections of the Great Wall wind their way up the spine of near-vertical mountain ridges, with a gradient so steep it makes hiking them a modern challenge, let alone building a massive fortification on them. There are segments that plunge into the Gobi Desert, where materials and water were almost non-existent, and others that cross raging rivers and deep gorges, often on bridges that have long since vanished. The logistical scale of this project defies comprehension. The wall was not built all at once, but over hundreds of years by different dynasties, each facing its own unique geographical and technical challenges. Millions of tons of stone, earth, and wood had to be transported to these remote, hostile environments, often on the backs of human laborers. This wasn't just a single project, but a series of interconnected, ever-expanding endeavors, each one a testament to the immense power of human organization and will. The wall isn't a single, continuous line, but a complex system of fortifications, watchtowers, barracks, and communication posts. It was a masterpiece of large-scale project management, a physical manifestation of a civilization's determination to protect itself, no matter the cost. Finally, let's travel across the Pacific, high into the Andes Mountains of South America, to a civilization that achieved an impossible feat with seemingly nothing but raw ingenuity, the Inca Empire. Unlike the Romans and Chinese, the Inca didn't have the wheel. They didn't use iron tools. Their terrain was some of the most difficult on the planet. Yet they built a road system so extensive, so perfectly adapted to its environment, that it remains one of the greatest engineering feats in history. This network was called the Kaknyan, or Royal Road, and it stretched for over 25,000 miles. That's enough to circle the globe at the equator. This wasn't a paved highway for wheeled carts, but a series of winding, intricate footpaths and trails designed to connect every corner of the vast Inca Empire. And the true genius? The way they built them. They carved entire roads directly into the faces of sheer cliffsides, creating terrifying, narrow ledges. They engineered complex staircases out of solid rock to ascend and descend mountains that seemed impassable. But the most spectacular part of the Kapaknyan were the bridges. When they came to a gorge or a river, they didn't go around, they went over it. They wove massive suspension bridges out of braided grass and rope, which could span hundreds of feet, and were strong enough to support the weight of armies and supply trains. These bridges were so effective that they were actively used for centuries, constantly maintained by local communities as a vital lifeline. The Inca's roads were a work of pure, adaptive genius. They didn't flatten the land, they worked with it, creating a circulatory system that allowed for incredibly fast communication via their famous chasqui runners and the efficient movement of goods and soldiers. It was a civilization-wide effort to conquer the terrain, a monumental triumph of human spirit over nature, all without the aid of our most basic modern tools. These three examples, the Roman aqueducts, the Great Wall, and the Inca road system, show us that ancient engineering was not just about building big things. It was about solving big problems with unmatched creativity, precision, and a collective determination that is truly humbling. So we've explored the good, the grand scale of ancient infrastructure, but now let's zoom in. Let's look at the sheer genius of ancient architects who weren't just building big things, but building them with an unbelievable level of precision, artistry, and a mastery of materials that we still can't fully replicate today. This is where ancient engineering crosses over into pure magic. Our first example takes us to the ancient city of Petra in modern-day Jordan. When you see it, the most iconic structure is undoubtedly al khazneh or the treasury. It's an impossibly grand facade, with intricate columns and detailed carvings, all glowing with that incredible red hue of the sandstone cliff. You look at it and you think, wow, what an incredible building. But here's the secret. It's not a building. It wasn't constructed. It was carved. And not from the bottom up, the way we would build a statue or a monument. The Nabataean architects of Petra started at the top of the cliff and worked their way down. Think about that for a second. Imagine you're standing on the very top of a sheer rock face, hundreds of feet above the ground. You have to start chiseling the very top of a pediment, the capital of a column, 
working your way down, slowly, painstakingly, inch by inch. There is no room for error. A single mistake, a single miscalculation in the angle of a chisel could ruin the entire facade. You can't just fix a mistake with a new stone. If you messed up the top, you had to start all over, on an entirely new cliff face. This wasn't just architecture, it was a testament to a flawless, unwavering plan. A level of artistic and engineering confidence that is almost unfathomable. These weren't just builders, they were sculptors on a monumental, divine scale. They weren't adding to the rock, they were revealing the perfection they already saw within it. It's a method so audacious, so brilliant, that it makes us question what we truly mean by the word build. From the canyons of Petra, let's go high into the Andes Mountains of Peru to the lost city of Machu Picchu. Nestled on a ridge between two imposing peaks, it's a breathtaking sight. But its location is also a profound challenge. Machu Picchu sits on an active earthquake fault line, and the entire region is prone to seismic activity. So how has this delicate city, with its intricate stone walls and towering temples, survived for over 500 years without crumbling into dust? The secret lies in a brilliant technique known as ashlar masonry. Unlike the Romans who used mortar, the Inca did something entirely different. They precisely cut and polished each stone block to fit together perfectly with the neighboring blocks. There is no mortar, no glue, nothing to hold them together but the flawless, intricate shape of each stone. And this is the truly genius part. During an earthquake, the ground shakes, but these interlocking stones don't break. Instead, they shift, they vibrate, they dance slightly against one another, absorbing the immense shock of the quake. Once the shaking stops, the stones simply settle back into their original, perfectly aligned positions. They worked with the earth, not against it. They understood the power of seismic forces and engineered a solution that used them to their advantage. This isn't just clever building, it's a profound spiritual understanding of nature. The Inca didn't try to dominate their environment, they harmonized with it, creating a city that has defied the most powerful forces of nature for centuries. It is an enduring lesson in working smarter, not harder. Our final stop takes us to the heart of ancient democracy, Athens, Greece, and to the most famous temple of the ancient world, the Parthenon. It stands as the pinnacle of classical architecture, a symbol of order, balance, and pure perfection. But if you think the Parthenon is built with perfectly straight lines and right angles, you're looking at a carefully constructed illusion. The ancient Greeks were not just master builders. They were master psychologists and mathematicians. They knew that a truly straight line, viewed from a distance, can appear to sag or warp to the human eye. So they fixed it. First, let's talk about the columns. They aren't straight. They subtly bulge out in the middle, a technique called entasis. If the columns were perfectly straight, they would appear to pinch in the middle, looking weak and unstable. The gentle curve of the entasis makes them look powerful, straight and solid from any angle. Next, look at the base of the temple. The floor, known as the stylobate, isn't flat. It curves gently upwards in the center. If it were flat, the center would appear to sag under the immense weight of the structure, creating a visually unappealing hollow. By curving it upwards, the Greeks created the visual impression of a perfectly flat surface. Finally, the columns themselves aren't parallel. The outer columns all lean slightly inward towards the center of the temple. If you were to extend their lines far enough, they would eventually meet at a point high above the Parthenon. This subtle tilt makes the temple feel more dynamic and stable, like it's holding itself up against the immense weight of its roof. This wasn't an accident. This was a deliberate, mathematically calculated set of optical illusions designed to create a sense of absolute flawless perfection. The Parthenon is not just a building, it is a profound testament to the power of human perception. It shows us that ancient architects were not just concerned with function, but with how their creations would be seen, felt, and experienced. It's a reminder that true genius is in the details, in the subtle, hidden refinements that elevate something from being merely impressive to being truly immortal.
we've seen the grand scale of ancient engineering and the subtle genius of their architects. But what about the truly bizarre, the one-of-a-kind artifacts that hint at a level of knowledge so advanced, so out of place, that it makes us question everything we thought we knew? This is where the story gets really strange. This is the chapter of Lost Technologies and Enduring Mysteries. Let's start with a discovery that sent shockwaves through the scientific community. In the year 1900, sponge divers off the coast of a Greek island discovered an ancient shipwreck. Buried deep within the wreckage, they found a small, corroded lump of bronze. For decades, no one knew what it was. But when scientists finally cleaned it, what they found was astonishing. This was the Antikythera mechanism. Dating back to the second century BC, this isn't just a piece of metal, it's considered the world's first analog computer. Imagine a complex system of over 30 intricate bronze gears, all fitting together perfectly, with a dial on the front that could track the movements of the sun, moon, and planets. It could even predict astronomical events, like eclipses. The complexity of this device is so mind-boggling that nothing like it would appear in the historical record for another 1,500 years. Not until the great mechanical clocks of medieval Europe. The Antikythera mechanism is a solitary, silent witness to a level of technological sophistication that was seemingly erased from history. It forces us to ask, what other incredible inventions were lost in the sands of time? waiting to be rediscovered. And while some mysteries are found beneath the waves, others are etched into the earth itself in plain sight. High in the desert plains of Peru are the Nazca Lines. These aren't carvings on a building. They are hundreds of massive geoglyphs, simple lines, and intricate drawings of animals like hummingbirds, spiders, and monkeys scraped into the desert floor. They span miles. The mind-bending part? You can't see them from the ground. They are only fully visible from a great height. Think about that. An ancient people, with no known ability to fly, created designs on a monumental scale that could only be appreciated by someone or something far, far above. Their purpose remains a profound mystery. Were they a form of communication to the heavens? A ritualistic calendar? A giant map? The truth is, we don't know. The Nazca Lines are a tantalizing riddle a challenge to our modern understanding of purpose, scale, and why a civilization would pour so much effort into a work of art that was never truly meant for them to see. It's a powerful reminder that history is full of unanswered questions and that the past holds secrets we may never fully comprehend. These artifacts, these mysteries, are more than just historical curiosities. They are windows into a past far more complex and capable than we ever gave it credit for. They remind us that the story of human ingenuity is not a straight line of progress. It is filled with peaks and valleys, with chapters we have yet to fully read. From the Roman aqueducts defying gravity to the Parthenon's perfect imperfections, and from the lost genius of the Antikythera mechanism to the profound mystery of the Nazca lines, We've journeyed far beyond the shadow of the pyramids. We've seen that ancient engineering was not just about building big. It was about thinking big, solving impossible problems, and creating with a level of ingenuity that continues to humble and inspire us today. These aren't just relics of the past. They are profound testaments to the boundless creativity of the human mind. They remind us that our ancestors were not primitive, but pioneers, masters of their world, who possessed a deep understanding of science, math, and art, far beyond what we give them credit for. They are enduring lessons that true innovation often comes from working with what you have, and that the greatest achievements can be born from the most challenging circumstances. But this isn't the end of the story. It's just the beginning. Every day, archaeologists are unearthing new artifacts and new secrets. Every day, modern science gives us new tools to understand these wonders. What other incredible inventions are still buried, waiting to be rediscovered? What other chapters of human genius are yet to be written? The past holds a wealth of secrets, and it's up to us to keep asking questions. So, we'd love to hear from you. Which of these ancient marvels did you find the most mind-boggling? And what other forgotten wonders do you think we should explore next? Let us know in the comments below.
and let's continue to unravel these enduring mysteries together.